In this video, I'm talking about how to make consistent characters in Leonardo AI. I will show you three different methods. Let's dive in. So you go to here, you have these different modes, and you go to Image Creation. Use Cinematic Preset, and you have the style and all this stuff, and just leave it as default. If you really want to do this and use it on Instagram and all this stuff, you should put this to quality. So images have a higher quality and a really way better result. But for the purpose of the video, I am just using fast. You still get the idea. So you put the prompt in. I have pre-written this prompt so you can just put it in, and then you generate. Takes a while. If you put quality on it, takes even longer. But not that long. Let's make another one. So you have two versions. And you see they look a little bit alike because of the same prompt, but you can see the difference between those two women. Let's say we want her. So what we can do, we go here, and you can copy the seed. Seed is a number for the generation of the picture. Basically, it's like an identity of the generation. Doesn't mean it's exactly the same all the time, but it, you can generate something similar. So I put the seed in here. Then you can adjust the prompt. Something like wearing a yellow dress. And she's not standing on the beach. She is standing in the forest, for example. And everything else is the same. And now I click on generate. And because we use the seed, it uses the seed from this generation and you see there's a similarity. It's not perfect. It depends on what you want to do. If you want to do a perfect Instagram model and you want to have her like, in every picture the exact same person all the time, then you need another method I show you later. But depends on what your project is, kind of get away with it, you know, because it does not cost more tokens and it's a very easy and cheap method to get something that looks similar. And it's definitely available in the free version. Another example, wearing a green dress, jogging through the city, something like this. And now again, you see it's a little bit different, but kind of like her. And if you put the quality on high and do the same method, then it looks even better and more similar, you know, because it's the same seed. Yeah, that's the first method. One last tip for this method. If you want to have the same clothes all the time to have more similarity, you can put in more detail. For example, if you say, like she has red hair, green eyes, blue dress, and this and that, and earrings or whatever, then you can put it in. And so if you put that in as well, even for the next situation, for example, so the dresses and so on will be the same and you have good similarity. Now for the second method. Until now all this stuff was available in the free version. For the next part you need a paid version. I just bought the cheapest one for one month, so I can try everything. Now method two. We go to this little button here, and if you click it, you see those options. And there's even more options, which are pretty cool. For example, you can see here, there is like pose to image. Also pretty cool. You can put whatever a pose of someone in there, and then your character will have the exact same pose. Not always perfect, but works really well. You can combine all this stuff with character reference and style and so on. But for this example, we just use character reference. Say confirm. And now you can upload an image, or you go to your generations. For example, we choose her. We click her confirm, and now you see this little picture here that means the character is in there. And so we can do like low, mid, high, I say high. So it has a very high resemblance to the original character. And now you can see it's more expensive. It went from five, I think, to seven. And if you combine it with quality and other things, it costs even more tokens. So now I can change the prompt. I change the prompt to something different, something like wearing jeans, yellow jacket, and so on. And now you see, I put the images right next to each other. Left is the one we put in the character reference, and the right one are the new generations. And now you can see they're like pretty similar. Still not perfect, but it's way better. Keep in mind, if you put this on quality, the results will be way better. And from now on, with this reference, they will look definitely more alike. So it means if I do another scene, for example, let's say they're wearing jeans, blah, 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 running through the city. Now it looks more like her. And from now on, all prompts will look like her, you see? Now for the third method. This method is also not free. You need a paid version for this. But when you have trained the model, the image creation with that model is cheaper than method two. So if you want the exact same person all the time, you can do this. Okay? You click here on More, and then you click on Train Your Own Model. And then you click on New Data Set. 
You can see my model, I tell you more about it later. It's just an example model. And you click on new data set. And here you put in a name, for example, red hair woman. And the same in the description as well. And now you have to upload your images. You can either take the images from down here when you created lots of images with a similar looking person with Leonardo AI, or you upload the pictures from your hard disk. I just prepared them, so I put them in. It's just an example how you would do it. Like if we would train the model with the pictures from the woman we created. I think you can put a maximum of 40 images up there. You should do at least 20, 25, something like that, to have good results. And also the character should be in different poses and from different sides. Then the model has more data to process to make the character better. So you click on Train Model. Here you can pretty much let everything on default. And you put in an instant prompt. It's for the identification of the model. And that's basically it. And now if you press Start Training, it will start the training of your model with the uploaded pictures. And this process will take a while. I'm not exactly sure I have not looked the last time, but I think like an hour, maybe even longer. And when you come back later, then you have a trained model. I have an already trained model for the purpose of this video, so I'm not actually training this model here. That's basically it. If you have the cheapest paid version, you can train 10 models per month. That's enough in my opinion. Now you can go to training and data sets, and on job status you see the progress. You see the model name and all this stuff. And on the right side, you see something like preparing or training. And when it's done, you see a green check mark. And then you have your trained model. And here's your data set. So just for your information, job status and so on, so you know what's going on with your trained models. Now we can create images with the trained model. Go to image creation. And on the top right corner, you have to go to legacy mode to enable some additional features. Click on it. And on the left side, you see there are some new features and other stuff. You don't need to worry about too much, just leave it as default. And now click on Fine-Tuned Model and go to Select Other Model. Then you go to your models, then you go to View, and you go to Generate with this model. And now you have the model selected here. And you can put in a prompt now. For example, Hacking Guy in the Office Smiling. And click on Generate. And another example. Yeah. And now you can see the resemblance. They kind of look the same. And keep in mind, the more images you upload, the better the results will be. I just upload 11 pictures. That's not much, you know. And in every picture he has the same pose. It's like a very bad data set for the model. But the result is already very good. And if you put in better pictures in different poses, different sides, and so on, then you really get good results and have a perfect model for your Instagram influencing stuff or whatever. Those are the three methods. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you like the video. See you in the next video.